This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hi, my name is Ben from Wobi Design and today I'm going to show you how I made an apple crate out of recycled skateboards. Now, I wanted to try something different and for the first time, I'm doing a voiceover for this video and hopefully it's informative enough so that you can make it too. Let's get started. First, I used a foldable staircase that I made to get up the stairs and get to the stash of skateboards that I have that I collected over the years. Now, for this project, I'm picking out five full skateboards with no brakes and I'm looking for something with unique graphics or stickers. I picked out five different skateboards for the slats and since I'm going to be making the inner supports out of the skateboards as well, I picked out two more extras. Once I picked out all the skateboards, I had to get ready to take off the grip tape. Now the best way to take off these grip tape is to heat up these skateboards and I used to do this with a heat gun but I eventually made my own little contraption. It's made out of toaster oven and it has a slow feeding motor on the bottom so it slowly feeds the skateboards while it's heating up the grip tape. And I could take off the grip tape while the new skateboard is getting heated up. Now to actually take off the grip tape, I like to start off by using a sharp razor blade and going around the edges of the skateboard and it should be a lot easier for you to peel the grip tape off from the skateboards. Now after taking off thousands of grip tapes from these skateboards, I find it easiest to just wrap these grip tapes around the dowel and just keep rolling it until you're finished. And the most important thing here is to do everything in one piece because once it breaks, that means you have to go over with a utility knife and find a sweet spot to peel it off and do it all over again. So make sure to go slow and try to get everything in one piece. Some of these grip tapes are really easy to take off and some of these are not like this one. So it really depends on the grip tape and the skateboards. Once I take off the grip tape, I usually move on to sanding, but for this project, I actually need to save all the graphics and the stickers. So I'm just cleaning up any of the leftover pieces on the skateboard. And as for the grip tape, I don't know what to do with it. So I just usually throw it away. Now, depending on the skateboard and the grip tape, there's gonna be a little bit of grip tape residue left over on the board. And the easiest way to take this off is using this stuff called Goo Gun. And all you have to do is just spray this stuff on and wait about 15 to 20 minutes and it should be a lot easier to take it off. Now, the Goo Gun itself isn't strong enough to take off the grip tape residue by itself. So what I actually have to do is I actually have to use a scraper to scrape it off the skateboard. And I'm going very lightly so that I'm not taking off any of the finish that's already on the skateboard. Once I scrape off all the grip tape residue, it just turns into this gooey stuff. So I just have to wipe the board clean and any of the spots that I miss, I could just go over it again with the scraper. And this is the best way that I found to use these skateboards without sanding off the graphics or the stickers. Now, in my honest opinion, these skateboards are filthy and I don't know where it's been, so I tried to sand it down to bare wood, but for this project, I need the graphics, so I tried to wipe it down as clean as possible so that I can move on to the next stage, which is milling. Real quick, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. I know it's not surprising to believe, but I have no formal training in woodworking, videography, or video editing. And in these modern times, there's no need to physically go into class to learn something. And you can just learn at the comfort of your own home. Skillshare is online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning. There's so many categories to choose from like animation, business, design, photography, writing, and so many more. You can learn from anywhere, at any time, and at your own pace. These classes are curated by experts in their field and you can learn by just watching them work as well as share their experiences. I took a class called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with Marquez Brown Lee. And I was able to see the entire process of how Marquez Brown Lee makes his YouTube videos from start to finish. And I love how these classes are broken down into different lessons so I could always pick up where I left off. And right now, the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, so back to the build. I have all these skateboards cleaned up and ready to be milled up into more usable lumber. 
Now for this project, I just need the straightest part of the skateboard so I could just cut the nose and the tail off and I could just use those pieces for future projects. Now the best way that I found to cut the nose and the tail off is cut about an inch away from the outside truck holes and this should give you the flattest part of the skateboard uh, pretty much taking away one of the concaves of the skateboards. Now there's still a ton of concave on these skateboards and it's really not safe to rip them on the table saw. So I like to use my bandsaw for this. And I'm setting the fence 2 inches away from the blade and that usually takes away majority of the concave that's left over on these skateboards. Now another thing is majority of these skateboards are about 8 inches wide. So if you set the fence 2 inches away from the blade, you get 4 strips. Now another thing is these skateboards have straight edges on the sides so you could reference that off the fence and give you a nice straight cut. Now once you rip them on the bandsaw you should have 4 strips per skateboard. Now these end pieces still have ton of concave left over and it's not safe to run it on the table saw so we gotta chop this off first. Now to get the most out of these strips there's usually an indicator right here and that's where the wheels actually touch the skateboard and that's the part I like to cut off and that usually gives me the flattest part of these skateboard strips and the safest. And these are about 14 inches long and I could use these strips as the size of the apple crates and I should have more than enough to trim the ends. Now that it's safe enough, I could use the table saw to trim it to its final size. The final size I'm going for is 1 and 3 quarter inch and so I'm setting the fence a little bit wider than that. And for the first cut, you're cutting off the rounded edges of these ends of these skateboards as well as for the middle strips, you're getting a nice fresh cut edge on one side of these strips, pretty much jointing these strips. And then I set the fence to its final size and pretty much getting rid of all the bandsaw marks left over on the other side of these strips. Now this should give you nice clean cut edges on both sides of these strips and these strips are fairly flat where you could use it as usable lumber. Okay so here it is, 4 strips per skateboard and each strip is 1 and 3 quarter inches wide and 2 of these strips are 14 inches long and 2 of these strips are 20 inches long. Now for the dimensions for this apple crate, I'm basing it off of this little doggy bed I got from Amazon. The plan is to attach the apple crate onto a bike so I could take Toby with me when I go out for a ride. Now for the base, I'm using this 3 quarter inch plywood I had laying around and I cut it the exact size as the bed. And once I had the base, I could start cutting the shorter strips to its final size. Now these strips are getting cut at the same length as the side of the base. I first square up one end of these strips and then flip it over and put a stop and then finish trimming it to its final size. And using a stop block will make sure that all these strips are the same length. Now once I have the side strips cut to its final size, I can start moving on to the longer strips. I started marking the longer strips and trim them on the table saw. I square up one end of these strips and then flip it over and then put it on the stop and then finish the cut and cut it to its final size. And these strips are ready to go and I can start working on the inner support strips. Now for the inner support strips, I'm laminating two skateboards together and that should give me the thickness of about 3 quarter inch thick. Now whenever I'm laminating skateboards together, I like to use totable epoxy over traditional wood glue because it's a lot stronger and it gives you a permanent bond. Now in this case, wood glue should be more than enough but Totoboat is a sponsor of this channel so I thought I'd just plug them in. And if you want to save some money on Totoboat products, use the coupon code down in the description below. And I just clamp these up and just let it cure overnight. Now the next day the epoxy had cure and I could take it off the clamps and start working on the inner support pieces. I need to get at least one straight edge off of these strips so I'm going to be using my jointer. And storing my jointer underneath these stairs is the best thing I ever did. 
Now once I have these strips with one clean edge, I can just rip it down on the table saw. And I'm ripping them down into three quarter inch strips and that should be more than strong enough to become inner support pieces for this apple crate. And once I had all the inner support pieces ready to go, I can start assembling the crate by starting off with the side walls first. Now since I'm going to be using screws to attach these strips to the inner support pieces, I'm marking all the holes where I'm going to be countersinking so that all the holes are lined up and it looks real nice. And by countersinking, all the screw heads will be flush with the strips and nothing will stick out. Now to attach these strips to the inner support pieces, I'm checking to make sure it's square first and drive in the first screw and then check to make sure it's square again and then I could drive in the second screw. And once you have the first strip attached, you can space out the rest of the strips by using a half inch spacer. Now once you attach all the strips together, you should have two side walls for the apple crate. And I could trim these walls to its final size on the table saw. Now once I had all the side strips attached, I could start working on the longer strips. And just like the shorter strips, I marked each of these holes and countersunk these strips. And then I could start attaching these longer strips just by clamping it onto the inner support pieces and then I could start driving in the screws. And then I could attach the rest of these strips and it should be a lot easier if you pre-drill these holes so that you don't strip the head or break off a screw head or something like that. Now once you attach all the strips together, we can start modifying the base so that it fits into the crate. I just have to cut the corners of this base so that I could clear the inner support pieces on the crate. Now with a little bit of persuasion, the base seems to be fitting into the apple crate. And right now it's just friction fit, but eventually later down the line, I'm going to be pin nailing them from the side and that should secure the base and everything should be nice and strong. Good. Does Toby Baby fit in here? Like a good boy? Yeah? Who's a good boy, Toby? Now, the apple crate has been assembled, but there's still a little bit of burn marks as well as I have to round over the edges as well, so I have to actually disassemble it. Now, since I already pre drilled these holes, I actually have to do it one side at a time. So I unscrewed all these strips and started sanding off any of the burn marks. Now after sanding, I started rounding the edges of these skateboards so that there's no sharp corners and you can't get cut from it, and especially since Toby is going to be inside. Now like I said before, I have to work one side at a time because I already pre drilled these holes. And pretty much you're going to be doing this for each side. You're going to have to unscrew everything, sand off any burn marks, and round over the edges. Now once you go over all four sides, you can start attaching the base onto the apple crate. Now I'm using 18 gauge pin nailer and luckily the bottom strip is actually black so it kind of hides the pin nails. I gave the bottom of the base a quick sand and started getting ready to finish this apple crate. Now this is a foldable spray booth that I made and I have a separate YouTube video on this but this has come in so handy and I highly recommend it. Now for finish, I'm just using spray can lacquer because it dries super quick and I think I put on three coats in probably less than an hour. Now once the finish dried, I had to do something about the bottom of this apple crate. So I decided to cover it up with skateboard grip tape and I think this adds a nice touch to the whole theme of Recycle Skateboard Apple Crate. Okay, so here it is, an apple crate made out of recycled skateboards. Now, the main reason why I wanted to make this is so that I could attach it to my bike. Now, to attach the apple crate onto the bike, I'm just wrapping the cables with electrical tape, and I'm just using a couple of pipe clamps, and that should secure the apple crate onto the bike. Now, since this is an electric bike, there's a bunch of wires, so I just have to make sure to not to jam these wires and just secure it onto the handlebars. And I just check to make sure everything works, and pretty much this is how you attach a basket onto your bike. Now as long as you don't go on these crazy jumps, this should be more than secure enough. And I could easily remove the basket just by unscrewing two pipe clamps. 
The only problem is that nothing is securing the bottom of this apple crate. Now so far I haven't had any issues but in the future if it becomes a problem I could always just zip tie it onto the bike frame and that should secure this basket very nicely. Now full disclosure, Aventon did send me this e-bike and it's a single speed e-bike with pedal assist as well as throttle. And the battery is integrated into the bike frame as well as the back brake lights and I just love how simple this bike looks. And adding this apple crate onto the bike made it look super classy and it's super functional and I'm really happy with how it came out. Okay, so this is how I made an apple crate out of recycled skateboards and attached it to my e-bike. And this was my first attempt at doing a voiceover for this video and I hope it was informative and maybe if you have five skateboards laying around, maybe you can make it too. Now, the main point of this video is to turn these skateboards with multiple different concaves and turn them into usable lumber. And I kept all the graphics and the stickers and it made the apple crate look a lot more vintage and look classier. So I'm very happy with how it came out. And that's it for this video. Special thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get one month free trial of Skillshare. So make sure to sign up. And I wanna give a huge shout out to Totoboat for supporting this channel. Make sure to use the coupon code down in the description below and get a fat discount off of all Totobo products. Thanks Totobo. And lastly, if you're in the market for a single speed e-bike that's really simple as well as stylish, check out Solterra from Aventon. I'll have the link down in the description below. And if you wanna support this channel and help me make more videos, check out my Patreon page. And finally, if you felt like you were entertained, make sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell like this video and comment down below what you think about this apple crate made out of recycled skateboards. Thanks again and until next time.